Hello guys and welcome to um, another War of Thunder Tips video. Today we are going to be taking a look and overview on the Soviet um, nation and its tree. The Soviet nation is one of the trees in currently War of Thunder which has some more options and different... Um, well, it's got a very nice spread of planes in different tiers. So we are going to try to make an overlook on all of them and see them one by one, just trying to see how they do and how they perform. I'm not going to stand uh, start from this line, I'm going to actually start from the reserve line because it makes a little bit more sense. I will try to go up the levels and explain them one by one. Uh, first planes you are going to fly in the Russian tree, they are going to be the I-15 uh, um, versions, the um, Setos. <laughs> That's the way they were called in, in Spain, in the Civil War. These are, in my opinion, the best um, reserve aircraft, simply by the fact that they are really fast, and they maneuver really well, and they have double the firepower than any other reserve plane. So these are very fun to fly, and <laughs> a little bit OP, in the sense that, given the competition, the, the firepower is, is nasty. These planes are really good. Moving on, is yet another reserve plane, which is the E-15Bs, which has somewhat better performance than the previous ones. It's basically the same, actually. So you have four E-15s. Then you have the Chaika, the E-15-3M62. Um, I would try to say it in other ways, but this is in, this this thing is broken. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. Um, it's too good for a B plane, and it's really is overperforming in many ways. Um, of course, it's very fun to fly, but really, the thing is broken. <laughs> it's, it's that way. Uh, climbs too good. It's too fast for what it should. Dives super well for what a B plane should do. Mm, yeah, this is one of the OP planes of the Russian team. Uh, um, nation. By the way, as I go up the levels, you will see that. Contrary to what many people think, I don't think there are a lot of Russian teams that are bro uh, planes that are broken. There are some, a few, but those that are broken are really, really broken. You will uh, know what I mean when we reach that, that point. Next in line is the I-16 Type 18, which is another of the broken planes. I mean, these two really need a flight model fix. I'm not going to enter into detail because it's a broken plane, let's be honest. Um, so let's go into serious stuff. First, Lagi G3 at level 3. There are two of them, the Lagi 3 8 Lagi G3-11. They are both level 3, they are both really powerful for the level. You can see I don't own the Lagi G3-11, but I do the Lagi G3-8. I have flown it quite a bit. And for the level it's at, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculously, sorry. It's ridiculously, ridiculously good. This is a 941 plane, and for a 941 plane, that thing is a stinker. The thing is that it's a level 3, and a level 3 is going to find planes that are from early, pre, before the war. And against those, this thing is really good. It's very fast for a plane this level. It doesn't maneuver really well. It's, it's not a good sound fighter at all. It's not a good um, E-fighter as well, it doesn't accelerate or climb really well, but it's very fast and it dives like a brick and it zooms really well for a, for a level 3. This is actually a very nice Buma Sumer and it has a firepower because it has a 20mm back cannon and those, that thing really hits hard for the level it's, it's in it at. These planes are excellent, excellent for this level. The, I actually would say that these planes are too low of a level because at this... Uh, at this um, um, tier, this thing is too good, to be honest. Moving on, we have two planes at level 4, which are the Light GG335 and the MiG-315. Uh, they are very different for creators. The Light GG335 is a similar version to, uh, to the Light GG3 uh, in the level 3s, but it's faster, climbs better, accelerates better, gives the same um, um, weapons, it's every bit as powerful as the previous one in the level it's sitting at. It's a very good plane. Still, at these levels you are starting to see more tough opposition, so it's not as... Uh, well, it's not as good as the previous one. Still, it's very good. 
uh, for the level C in that. And if you fly it well, remember, this is not a turn, uh, turn fighter, this is not a plane that climbs or accelerates very well, this is a good boom and zoomer. <coughs> The MiG-315 is a very strange plane for the Soviet 3. This is actually one of the very few, if not the only, high-altitude Soviet fighter. Um, it's very lightly armored, it only has one heavy machine gun and two uh, light machine guns. Still, the weapons do the job, but it's lightly armored. Uh, against fighters, it's a nice loadout, but against enemy bombers, you can waste all your ammo and they will still go on. Um, they aren't bad at turning, but you shouldn't be turning them a lot. They aren't especially good at climbing either, so it's not a really good energy fighter. They are all good rounders, they are a little bit of everything. They are not spectacular at anything either, except at one thing. If you are level 4, you go up at maybe 7500 meters and you are lucky enough to find an enemy, you are going to eat it alive. You are going to totally crush it, because this plane has a very high altitude uh, tuned engine and at altitudes of 7000 meters and above, it actually performs really, really, really well. The problem of course is that at level 4 no one goes that high. So, this is kind of a plane that really doesn't have a role to feel in War Thunder. Still, it's a kind of fun plane to fly. In some ways, it's very similar to the to the D520, uh, the British Premium that we can see could see in the plane analysis. It's not really performing really well at anything, but it's very fun and it has very nice controls. It's, it feels nice. Uh, but the problem, well, mm, firepower is light and yeah, well. Next line is the Jack 7B and the Jack 1B. I'm going to mention them both together because they fly very similar. These planes are decent accelerators for the level, they are decent turn fighters for the level, they are a kind of an. and this is something that is particularly truth of the uh, Soviet fighters. They are jacks of all trades, but master of none. They kind of do, they, they are well-rounded. They do a lot of stuff and they do it very well, but they are not the best at, at, at them. And these two are very good instances. Jack 7B, Jack 1B, they are good climbers, they are not the best climbers. They are decent tour fighters, they are not the best tour fighters. Um, they are decent boom and zoomers, they are not good boom and zoomers. The thing is, depending on the enemy you find, you will be able to fight them having some card to play on them. For instance, if you go against, um, with these levels, a uh, Speedfire Mark II, you can energy fight them to death, because you climb much better than what they do, but you won't be able to outturn them at all. However, if you find a don't know, um, P40, you might be able to, well, you are totally going to destroy them in, in energy fighting. If you find a um, P47, you can totally outturn them. If you find uh, an Era Cobra, these things actually outturn them as well. So, they have cards to play against all nations and all planes. If it's not turn fighting, it's going to be uh, energy fighting. So, really nice planes. The problem is that they are jack of all trades and it requires you to know the enemy as well as your plane. And a lot of people don't know their plane and they don't know the enemies and they don't know exactly what to do versus what uh, versus whatever enemy they have in front of them and they suffer a lot. But these are very good fighters. Next in line comes the LA5, level 7. Seven <laughs> same history done with the jacks. Good, good, good all rounder. Um, as I like to, to say, it outpaces anything it can't outturn, and it, uh, it outturns anything it can't outpace. And if not outturn, outmaneuver, one of both. Uh, so again, same story, well-rounded, not, it's not spectacular, uh, spectacular at anything, but it's good <laughs> at most things. Moving on to the level 8. LA-5F. 
I haven't flown this plane. And I only have seen them flown by DARPs that uh, were trying to obtain much lighter planes with them. So I can't really give you a good idea of how it flies. I can tell you how it should fly. It should be a more powerful version of the LA5. Simple as that. Little bit more clean bright, little bit more acceleration, faster, but other than that, keeping the same attributes as the LA5. It's not the best turner, it's not the best uh, climber, it's not the best boom and zoomer, but it's a little bit of everything. So just pick your style of fighting depending on the enemy you are going to find. On the other side of the tree, you have the Jack 19, which is a shit plane, <laughs> let's be honest. This thing turns very well, and it's the only thing it does, and it's still turning really well. It can't outturn planes like the Emil or the Spitfire. So it's not a good turn fighter because you, they are going to beat you. It doesn't climb well, it doesn't accelerate well. It has a 37mm cannon that in arcade is going to rip things apart, but in historical battles it's mostly, you, well, unless you are an ace at shooting, and they are people that are, I'm not. Um, the, the cannon in historical battles is a liability. Uh, simply too few rounds and too hard to aim. If you hit with it, well, it's going to be a total derp, but you have to hit, and it's not easy to hit. However, say that, these planes are fast enough. They are nice, nicely quick. So against faster, uh, fighters, you want to use high speed tactics. Against bombers, you can rip them to pieces. Still, it's not a good fighter. It's pretty mediocre, let's be, le let's be honest. Moving one level up, LA5FN, excellent fighter. It takes the LA5 concept to the next level. It actually climbs and accelerates really well, really, really, really well. And I'm talking that this thing can not outmatch, but is within BF109 levels. Uh, the BF109 G2 is going to out turn it, uh, out climb it and out accelerate it, but the difference is minor. It's not that big. This thing climbs really well. This is an energy fighter and an excellent one. One thing with the, all the LA5s is that they have excellent firepower for what they are. They have two cannons, but they have them in the center line. So if you are hitting with one, you are hitting with both. And two of those cannons hit really fast and kill enemies really quickly. Mixing that with the acceleration and clean rate of this thing, the LA5FN is for me, one of the best fighters of the Russian tree and an absolute marvel to fight. It's really, really, really nice. The other side of the tree, Jack 9K. You can see I don't even have it because I can't be bothered. I have actually tested it in, in test flight. The cannon is wild. It's heavier than the Jack 9T. It has the same power, so it turns worse, accelerates worse, climbs worse. It is slower. And the cannon, I mean, it's a 45 millimeter cannon, but whatever you are, you are one shotting with a 45 millimeter cannon, you are going to one shot with the 37 millimeter. Bombers fear this thing, but it's hard to aim, really hard, because the cannon has massive recoil, and if you fire more than one or two shots per burst, you are not aiming anymore. Simply the, the shots will go wherever, wherever. This is really it's it's horrible it's horrible i haven't flown it but i know it's horrible because i know how the jack 90 flies in historical battles this thing is is, is oh it's terribly bad in historical battles however in arcade oh god <laughs> yeah i i have seen these things nice in arcade i know what they do however this is the thing these two planes are excellent in arcade but in historical battles they are absolutely mediocre um, against enemy fighters, you have one machine gun because you are not going to hit with the 45 millimeter cannon. I can guarantee you that, unless you are a true ace shot, or your lucky stars are blessing you. Um, next in line is level 10, Jack 3. <laughs> I'm at loss of words to say how awesome this thing is. It's an incredible energy fighter and has a very nice. Uh, turn ability to 
back that uh, energy fighting ability. It's very light, so Boom and Summon is not at all its speciality and suffers against Boom and Summers because it's very hard for this guy, for this thing, to um, catch enemies diving and Summon. But oh, yes, what a plane. It's fast, it's quick, accelerates like mad, climbs like a rocket. The problem? Over 4,500 meters starts losing um, performance fast, but still, even up to 6,000 meters, this thing is really competitive. A hell of a fighter. Hell of a fighter, really. Level 11, Jack 9P. Jack 3 with 3 uh, 20mm cannons. Do I need to say more? <laughs> no, isn't it? LA7, you could see my analysis a couple of weeks ago, excellent fighter, it's a LA5FN on steroids. Um, the problem is that at level 12 you start going up against and finding planes like the BF109 G10, which out-accelerates out uh, out and outclimbs it, and actually outturns it with Suren, do so. Still, it's a hell of a fighter. Great energy fighter, great turn, turn ability, great maneuverability. Really, really, really good fighter. Um, this in line is the LA7B20. I can process it, I haven't done so yet. But basically, it's the same as the LA7, but with three uh, 20 millimeter cannons instead of two. So, this thing has monster firepower because they are all in the nose. So, if you are hitting with one, you are hitting with three. And those things rip things apart really, really, really quickly. Next in line comes the Jack 9P. I don't have this plane, but I have seen it in action. It's kind of a Jack 3 on steroids. A Jack 9 is, is like a Jack 3P on steroids. It's actually faster. It's not a good in clean rate on the celebration, but it's faster. It's better in Puma Zoom. It's, this is back to the to the early series of the Jack theme. This is a Jack of all trades, master of none. Still, it mounts three, mounts three cannons. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, nothing at level 15, and we move to the first yet, Jack 15P. This is a... Um, not going to say, say a bad plane, but I don't own it, of course, but I have them. Uh, I have fought against them a lot of times. It's very slow for a jet fighter, but also it's really nimble for a jet fighter. So it's kind of a strange jet fighter. It's a jet fighter that is very good at turning, but it's not really fast. And it only has one uh, cannon with 60 rounds. It's a 23 millimeter cannon, but still it's just one and only 60 rounds. Not a good plane. Can get the job done, and for I have seen, for what I have seen, it's very fun to fly. But you are not going to be killing a lot of stuff in this thing. Next in line comes the Jack 15, uh, level 17. It has two of the same cannons, the Jack 15 P had, but exactly with the same problem: low ammunition, 60 rounds per cannon. It's not a lot, but still you have doubled your firepower. Other than that, similar to the Jack 15 P, uh, slow. For a jet fighter, still is is faster than almost every other propeller engine plane, but it's not that much faster than them. So you have to be careful with them. Um, it's slow for a jet fighter, but turns really well for a jet fighter. And the trend goes on because the Jack 17 is a step forward. It's a little bit faster, climbs a little bit better. Um, but the ammunition, I mean, the, the weapons are still not good enough, and it's still too slow for it yet. So, the Jack series jet fighters are not really good, to be honest. Uh, they are fun to fly. For what I've seen, they are fun to fly, but they are not going to get you a lot of kills, that's for sure. Uh, MiG-9 series, one at level 18, one at level 19. They are very similar to each other. Of course, the late one is a little bit better, but they are very similar. Hard hitting, because they have, this time, uh, two 23 millimeter cannons with a lot of ammunition, well, a lot, a reasonable of ammunition, because they have 80 rounds per cannon, which is not a huge lot, but those things hit hard. And you have the backup of, the, of a 37 millimeter um, a cannon, which if connects, is going to destroy the enemy. 
Um, it's not fast for a jet fighter, but it's much faster than the Jack series. So it's kind of a step to the faster planes while still keeping the nimbleness of the Jack planes. So while this plane is not as fast as other jet planes, certainly not as the Korean Iran war jets, and actually a Henkel 162 is able to catch a MiG-9 in a long run. It takes time, but it can be done. Um, the planes are actually quite nimble for what they are. Still, they are not really good fighters. <laughs> for I mean, at these levels, you are going to find uh, Meteor F4s, which are a lot better. You are going to find F9Fs, which are a lot better. And probably you will be seeing some Sabres as well, which are much, much, much better. So um, they are uninspiring yet. Still better than the Yaks, without a question. MiG-15s, really awesome. Uh, of course, now happens that the Americans have a better yet, but whatever, still, they are awesome. Um, bomber series, and here we start with the broken stuff. Um, no, not yet. BB-1, SU-2, SU-2, SU-2. SU These all are very similar to each other. They are actually the same plane with progressively better performance, with one exception, the SU-2 SU TSS-1. If you can see, and you, of course you can see, the um, stats of the, of the planes, you can see that some of them have just one turret and some of them have two. All of these planes here have one turret only, which is the dorsal one. The problem is that TSS-1, and I have to show you this, because you, otherwise you are not going to understand what I mean. The TU-2 TSS-1 doesn't have a proper turret. It has a gun mount position, which has a very limited arc of fire. While the rest of the SU-2s, including the BB-1, which is an SU-2, in everything but the name, has a proper turret with much wider fire arcs. Also, the TSS-1 sacrifices um, part of the of the firepower the plane has. All these planes have four machine guns, except for this one, which only has two. This actually is the worst of them all, because of those reasons. The uh, last SU-2 adds a uh, ventral position for cannons, which is pretty nice. Really fun planes to fly, very effective light bombers, and they are surprisingly maneuverable, so you can really turn double as a fighter, not as a very effective one, because you, your acceleration is shit, but you, you turn very well, so they are very fun planes to fly. LU2, awesome fighter uh, things, awesome. Uh, heavy hitters, mm, load a lot of ground attack ordnance, and those cannons, who oh, those cannons, what they do. Um, also, they turn really, really, really well. The IL-2 doesn't have a um, dorsal gunner, the IL-2M has a dorsal gunner. Finally, the IL-10, which is an evolution of the IL-2, is much faster, but it doesn't turn as well as the IL-2s, because it's heavier and has a smaller wing. And um, yeah, it's uh, an evolved version, it's faster than the IL-2s, much, much, much faster, so it has higher chances of, of not being caught, but if being, being caught, it can't turn as the IL-2. Still very nice ground attack planes. And now we start with the broken stuff. SB series, UFOs, all of them. This thing turn as a fighter. And actually I'll turn level four uh, fighters. This thing is insanely broken, absolutely retarded. IL-2, pretty much the same because it serves, it's, uh, it's almost the same as, as SB-2, so yeah. IL-4, now we start talking about proper bombers and not broken stuff. <laughs> um, not a really spectacular bomber. It gets the job done, but it's an, an inspiring. It doesn't really have a very good offensive gallery. Uh, it doesn't mount a lot of bombs. Mm, lagging. But, after the latest, latest patch, it can't mount a torpedo. Which is kind of cool, because no other Russian plane could, other than the Premium Catalina. Yer 2 series. My advice. 
just try to get this one. It's funny because it's the one I don't have. <laughs> but <coughs> excuse me. They are level 11s and level 12s. Uh, the really worth ones, worthy ones, are the latest two. Why? Because you can see that the later ones mount turrets with uh, 20 mm cannons, something that the previous ones don't do. They mount a ton of bombs. They can load incredible amount of bombs, but they are really, really easy pickings for enemy fighters until you hit the ones which have the 20 mm cannon, and those things bite and bite really, really hard. TU-2S, unless the year 2s which are pretty slow, they are actually heavy bombers for all intents and purposes, the TU-2 are medium bomber series. TU-2S, TU-2S-44, TU-2S-59, they are all really, really quick ground attack bombers. I don't have them unlocked, but I do have the gift one, which is exactly the same, but with less bomb load. They are really quick and the higher level, the quicker they are. They have really good defensive gunnery for applying this size. And also the fact that you are so fast means that most attacks are going for, to come from the rear quarter and those heavy machine guns really pack a punch. Also, they have 20 mm cannons and those things hit hard. And finally, it has a broken flight model. <laughs> These planes, the TU-2s, the Soviet ones, are the equivalent of the British Boo Fighters. Um, because they don't have a permanent flight model, they have placeholders and they turn really well, they climb too well, they, they are very fast, but they should be fast, that's not a problem, they are not broken in that sense. The problem is that they climb very well, they accelerate too well, and they turn really well. And they are made of adamantium, these things are so damn hard to shoot down. So, broken stuff. They are high levels, however, except for this one, which is a gift plane at level 9. You can get one of these in one of the starter packs, I think. Uh, I don't remember exactly how I got my TU2, but whatever. P3 series is kind of a lighter version of the TU2. They are somewhat slower, they are less broken, <laughs> because they don't. These things actually are not broken, they are okay. The thing is, again, adamantine armor, but this is not because. I think at least it's not because they are Soviet. This is not a case of Stalinium. This is a case of, oh, case of two engine bomberinium. Uh, two engine bombers in, in War Thunder in insanely tough. Uh, more so than what it should, but whatever. They are fast, quick, they get the job done. Um, still, they are slightly lacking in firepower. The TU2s are much better, but of course the TU2s are higher levels. They are very good for hit and run bombs, bomb attacks. And personally, I think that these planes shine, especially in arcade. In historical battles, not so much. But even in historical battles, if you are fast enough and quick enough to go to the ground target area, drop your bombs, and immediately get the hell out of there. I mean, you don't linger. You come in, drop your bombs, and get the hell out. You can do very, very nice hit and run attacks. But other than that, well, the TU2s are much better. Uh, of course, because they are broken, but even if they were not broken, they would be better. Finally, premium planes. Some premium version of the Taika is as broken as the normal one, so whatever. PBY 5A Carolina, level 3. Really nice bomber. Really nice bomber. Uh, can load torpedoes, can load bombs. Has really, really def uh, heavy defensive gunnery for its level. And they are tough as bricks. The problem, they are so damn slow, really, they fly like flying whales, it's like that. P40E1, level 4, the American one has been bumped to level 5 and this one remains at level 4, don't ask me why. Awesome, exactly as nice as the, and incredibly, incredibly good as the American one. Really, if you can get the money, purchase this plane, it's amazing. I, <laughs> Chaika P, well, if the normal Saika is broken with four light machine guns, just slap a couple of smack cannons there and just <coughs> spread the terror. These things are so damn broken and dangerous. Um, one of the most broken things in the version 3. 
And really, these things are really, really dangerous. <laughs> Believe me, I know, because I flow them a lot back in the day. Uh, P39K1, uh, which is uh, very similar, but it's very similar to the American ones. I mean, there are some differences in performance. The Soviet ones, in general, are quicker than the American ones. Um, but other than that, they are mostly the same. So it's an Aida Cobra. Faster than the American one, but an Aida Cobra. I-16 Type 28. <laughs> the normal one is broken. This one has a couple of smack cannons and a couple of light machine guns. And it's still an, uh, a broken Isaac. Um, yeah, well, whatever. P2 is... Actually, this P2, the P2 205 is mostly the same as the P2359. So uh, they are mostly the same plane. Um, and the same, the same attributes. So, yeah. B25 VA30, American Mitchell, mostly the same, but with a red star. The TU2, which is the GIF version of the um, regular TU2s. The difference is that the, this TU2 can mount, uh, uh, at the most, can mount one 500 kilogram bomb or two 250 kilogram bombs, while the regular TU2s can mount a lot more bombs up to four 500 kilogram bombs, two 500 kilogram bombs, and one 1,000 kilogram bombs, a lot of different combinations. The GIF one shares the attributes of the mm, normal ones in the sense that it's as broken <laughs> as they are, <laughs> but um, it doesn't have the same bomb load. So as a bomber, it's worse than the ATU-2. Uh, the thing is that, um, well, you get this at a much lower level, and the speed at this lower level is really felt. So it's a actually this is this thing is a pretty successful heavy fighter because it's it turns too good to 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 be honest. But whatever. And finally, the P sixty three A five, which is exactly the same as the American King Cobra, the A five version. Um, so if you want to fly this as a Russian, you can purchase it and you can fly it. So yeah, that's it for the Russian tree. My General opinion, exceptional at low levels, up to level 3, those things are trolls, even more so with those <laughs> broken stuff here. Uh, medium levels, they start to shift into a kind of Jakob of Altrade, Master of Nuns, up to level 10, when they have some really powerful planes, really exceptional planes. Over level 11, more or less, they return, well, level 12 with the LA-7, they return to the Jack of all trades with the Jack 9P. And the late game is not bad, but it's not the greatest either. Uh, until you hit level 20 with the MiG-15s, which are exceptional fighters, of course. They are the second best planes in the, in the game right now. Because they are Korean warriors and they are only second to the uh, American F-86, F-2. So, really great fighters. Excellent late war, excellent initial war, uh, uh, initial uh, tiers, and really good and solid mid-tiers. This is a well, very well-rounded uh, tree. Bombers are, for, for the most part, great. Um, you have the heavy bombers, you have very fast bombers, and you have the broken bombers. <laughs> but they will be get, they will get fixed, so no big deal. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the um, analysis of the Soviet tree. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a pretty good understanding of how it is. And as always, hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching, and see you later.